All right, good afternoon, everyone. We're thankful that you guys are with us today. We're thankful that we get to spend time in the presence of God. We're thankful that we get to open up the Word of God and learn and study and grow and be changed on the inside, become more like God, and allow the work of God into our lives. What we've been talking about these past few weeks is from 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and 1 Corinthians chapter 14. We're talking about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. And what I want to do, just as an introduction, just to remind us of the verses that we're uh, going through, I want to read 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 to 10. And these are, uh, uh, this is a list of the gifts of the Holy Spirit that are working in the church, are still alive and active and working in the church today. And God expects the people of God to display these gifts of the Holy Spirit through their relationship with God as, as a, a service and as a blessing to other people who are around them. So let's listen. 1 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 8 to 10. For to one is given the word of wisdom through the Spirit, to another the word of knowledge through the same Spirit, to another faith by the same Spirit, to another, gifts of healings by the same Spirit. To another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, discerning of spirits. To another, different kinds of tongues. And to another, the interpretation of tongues. So we've been going through this series, and we've been looking at all of the different gifts of the Holy Spirit. The words of wisdom, the words of knowledge, healings, miracles. Today, what we're looking at is we're going to look at the gift of prophecy. The gift of prophecy is what we're looking at. So what is prophecy? Prophecy is when, we, when someone, through the power of the Holy Spirit, speaks to another person and tells them something that may come to pass in, in the future. Uh, it's something where it's like, talking about what's going to happen. It's talking about uh, what they might face in the future, something that might happen. And so we're going to look at a few examples from the Bible, but this is something that's working and active in the church today, and it's meant for the people of God, and it's meant for the church today. So in 1 Corinthians 14, okay, so please remember our our chapters that we're looking at. We're looking at 1 Corinthians chapter 12, 1 Corinthians chapter 13, 1 Corinthians chapter 14. These are all chapters about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. So in chapter 12, it talks about the gifts of the Holy Spirit. In chapter 13, it talks about the, it's the chapter of love. And then chapter 14 talks again about the gifts of the Holy Spirit and gives some other instruction about, about the gifts. Chapter 13, we looked at in our last series when we were talking about love. And love is patient, love is kind. But at the beginning of chapter 13, it says, okay, if I have all of these gifts, but I don't have love, I am nothing. I am nothing. I, I don't have any, any value. Nothing's clear. I'm not leading people to God. So all of these gifts are meant to be motivated by love so that people can be drawn to this everlasting love of God that we just talked about in Romans chapter 8. And so that's, that's why 1 Corinthians chapter 13 is in the middle because it's so important because it's the core of why we have these spiritual gifts. It's nice to have the gifts, but if you don't have the love, how are people going to be drawn to the God of love? So we have 1 Corinthians 12, 13, and then I want to read some from 1 Corinthians 14 at the beginning. 1 Corinthians chapter 14, verses 1 to 5. It says, Pursue love and desire spiritual gifts, but especially that you may prophesy. For he who speaks in a tongue does not speak to men but to God, for no one understands him. However, in the Spirit he speaks mysteries. But he who speaks, sorry, but he who prophesies speaks edification, exhortation, and comfort to men. He who speaks in a tongue edifies himself. That word edify means to build up and to strengthen. 
but he who prophesies edifies the church. I wish you all spoke with tongues, but even more that you prophesied, for he who prophesies is greater than he who speaks with tongues, unless indeed he interprets that the church may receive edification. So in these first few verses of 1 Corinthians chapter 14, we see that Paul is comparing prophecy, where it's a clear, instructional, a directional word of God to speaking in tongues, which is speaking in another language, but it's speaking in our heavenly language to the Lord through the filling of the Holy Spirit. And so he's, he's comparing these two, and he's saying prophecy or giving the word of God is helpful because it edifies, it exhorts, and it comforts. And that's the goal of prophecy, to strengthen people, to encourage people, and to comfort them. Okay, But then he says prophecy is better than speaking in tongues because speaking in tongues is good and it encourages and it strengthens your own self. Okay, We'll see later as we look at the gift of speaking in tongues and the interpretation of tongues that Paul said, I wish everybody spoke in tongues. I wish that, uh, um, uh, that, that he, he, he talks about how he speaks in tongues and it encourages and strengthens himself. But when we speak in the word of prophecy, it's a clear message in that person's language so that they can receive exhortation, edification, and comfort. And so he's saying, seek to prophesy. Seek the word of God. Don't just speak in tongues, but seek the spiritual gift of prophesying to be an encouragement and a strength to each other. So what is prophecy? Prophecy. To prophesy means to foretell events divinely or to speak under inspiration. The Bible says that the Bible was written under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit. Prophesying is to speak something that's going to happen under the inspiration or the help or the encouragement or the, 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 the filling of the Holy Spirit. So that's the word to prophesy. Prophecy means the, the actual words that are spoken. And a prophet is, a, is the person. Okay? So in the Old Testament, there are many, many verses and uh, uh, books of the Bible that were written as prophetic words. Words that were prophesying people, people who were prophets who were prophesying about things that were to come. Even in, the, even in the first book of the Bible, in, in Genesis, Enoch was considered a prophet. Samuel and Nathan in the lives of David, these were both prophets, even before we read about the major prophets like Isaiah and Jeremiah and all those. There were also many other prophets. We basically, in the Old Testament, from Isaiah all the way to the end of the Old Testament, each of those books is a book written by a prophet to a certain person or to a certain nation. Usually, we, in those, in those uh, books of the Bible, we see about God's warning to a nation. For example, Israel or Judah or even some of the surrounding nations. There's a lot of warnings in there. Things that they're saying might happen or will happen if they don't turn from their wicked ways. But God also offers mercy, love, and restoration in all of these books as well. We talk, see Isaiah talking about the judgments to come. We talk about, see Jeremiah. But there's also the restoration. Jeremiah 31 says if people, <clears throat> if, if, if Jeremiah uh, uh, 31 talks about how God will write the word of God upon our hearts. The law will be in their hearts. Many people will turn to God and they will say that they will have the word of God, the law of God within their hearts. And so all of the, the prophets, they have the, there's some judgment, but also there's love, mercy, and restoration. These prophets, they prophesied to, the, to Israel and to Judah and surrounding nations, but they also prophesied about the coming Messiah as well. Many of these prophets in the Old Testament, they talked about Jesus who's to come, the coming Messiah. And even when Jesus was 
um, even, when, even, even when Jesus was having his ministry, there, we read in the different uh, books of the gospel, Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, we see how he was fulfilling all of these prophetic words that were spoken hundreds of years before Jesus about his life and what was going to happen, where he was going to be born, the names that he was going to be called, different things like that. Uh, we see all of these prophetic words fulfilled. Uh, also in the New Testament, there's many prophets in the New Testament as well. John the Baptist, he was considered a prophet. He started his ministry even before Jesus started his ministry. He was considered the last of the Old Testament prophets, even though he's at the beginning of the New Testament. Jesus himself prophesied about his crucifixion. He prophesied about who was going to betray him. He prophesied about how many days he was going to be in the tomb, when he was going to be raised again from the dead. Uh, there's also a couple of uh, examples in the book of Acts as well. There was a man named Agabus who prophesied about a great famine. Listen to this in Acts chapter 11, verses 28 to 30. Uh, it says, Then one of them named Agabus stood up and showed by the Spirit that there was going to be a great famine throughout all the world. So see, he was led by the Spirit and said there's going to be a great famine in all the world. And it says, this happened in the days of Claudius Caesar. Then the disciples, each according to his ability, determined to send relief to the brethren dwelling in Judea. This they also did and sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. So we see this guy named Agabus who by the help of the Holy Spirit, spoke about a famine that was going to come and affect the whole entire world. And so as a result, the churches in all of these different cities were able to gather a collection. They were able to gather aid and help and money to send to the other churches who were hit by this famine. And they sent it to the elders by the hands of Barnabas and Saul. Uh, in Acts chapter 21, I'll read one more story about this guy named Agabus. It says, And as we stayed many days, a certain prophet named Agabus came down from Judea. So this is when Paul was just getting ready to go to, um, to Rome and then to Jerusalem. When he had come to us, Agabus took Paul's belt, bound his own hands with it and, and his feet, and said, this, Thus says the Holy Spirit, So shall the Jews at Jerusalem bind the man who owns this belt. And deliver him into the hands of the Gentiles. Now when we heard these things, both we and those from that place pleaded with Paul, him, not to go up to Jerusalem. Then Paul answered, what do you mean by weeping and breaking my heart? For I am ready not only to be bound, but also to die at Jerusalem for the name of the Lord Jesus. So we see that, that Agabus was a prophet. And so he, made, he did these actions and he, he took Paul's belt and he tied up his his hands and his feet, and said, this is what is going to happen to the owner of this belt, speaking of Paul. He's going to be bound, and he's going to uh, be delivered into the hands of the Gentiles. But then everyone said, no, 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 we don't want Paul to go down. We, want, we don't want this to happen to Paul. But Paul says, I'm ready. And so in the second example, in the first example, we see God spoke to Agabus by the power of the Holy Spirit. And because of that, they were able to prepare and get ready for the famine that was to come. I think in this second instance, you know, obviously they didn't want Paul to suffer. They didn't want Paul to be bound up in chains. They didn't want Paul to, uh, you know, face difficulty in Jerusalem. Of course, they don't want. But I believe that Paul was being prepared by the Holy Spirit about something that was to come. And even though he knew that... Jerusalem is going to be difficult. I think that, that the Holy Spirit wanted Paul to know that, Paul, this is what's going to happen, but it's okay. I'm there with you. I'm going to help you in it and through it because I need you to go to Jerusalem. And so I think that in this instant, it was a difficult word for Agabus to bring to Paul, but it was something that helped prepare Paul for what he was going to face in Jerusalem. So this is an example of something where God spoke through a person to another person. So 
Agabus was the deliverer of the message. Paul was the receiver of the message. But the message came from the Holy Spirit. So it came from the Holy Spirit to Agabus for Paul. And so this is the way that prophecy works today also, is that the Holy Spirit speaks to a person. Maybe it's to you or to a different person. And God gives a certain word to that person for somebody else. And there's always the Holy Spirit is the, the sender of the message. There's always someone who is the deliverer of the message. And there's also someone who is the receiver of the message. And the person who works with the gifts of the Holy Spirit is the delivery person. They receive from the Holy Spirit and they bring it to the person who is to receive it, who is to receive exhortation, who is to receive encouragement, who is to receive comfort. Because the Holy Spirit wants to work through people. The Holy Spirit wants to work through people. And people might say, oh, the Holy Spirit doesn't, we don't see miracles today. We don't. No, that's not true. God works through people. God want, wants to work through you. This is why the Holy Spirit gives these gifts. The gifts are for our encouragement. The gifts are for people to be drawn closer to the God of love. Sometimes when we're spending time in the presence of God. Sometimes we'll just be praying at home or worshiping. The Holy Spirit speaks to you, gives you a word for somebody. Maybe it's a scripture verse. Maybe it's a picture. Maybe it's just one word. But the Holy Spirit speaks to us. And he'll say, I want you to share this scripture with this person. Or I want you to talk to this person about this. Or I want you to talk to this person about this. Just last night, just last night, uh, my wife received a text message from a friend of ours on the other side of the world. I love technology. I love the fact that we can just send a text message and it goes, flies up to space and it goes to another part of the world on the other side of the planet. But just last night, my, my wife got a text message from another pastor back in Canada. And it was a couple of verses from uh, Psalms 48. And she said, I don't know what this is about. I don't know how this is going to help you. But God just spoke to me these two verses. Psalms 48, verses 12 and 13. And so we looked, about, looked it up. And it was just such a huge blessing for us because it was an encouragement, and God spoke to my wife and to my heart directly about, what, about a certain situation, about what we were facing, and God showed that he is involved. He, he showed his sovereignty, he showed his power, and he showed his love through that. Now, what would have happened if that pastor on the other side of the world, they said, oh, it's kind of a weird verse. Ah, uh, they're not going to be blessed through that we would not have received any blessing if they decided, I'm not going to send it to Jason and Angie. They would have stopped the working of the Holy Spirit. And it's important for us as Christians not to get in the way of what the Holy Spirit wants to do. Our job, when we receive a pushing from the Holy Spirit, uh, 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 sometimes the Holy Spirit just kind of pushes us just a little bit and says, okay, here's a verse. Go and tell that person. And the Holy Spirit's so good. He's gentle. He doesn't kick us and beat us or anything, but he's, he's just gentle and he encourages us. But I want to encourage you, be obedient and be faithful to the Holy Spirit because you don't know what your word is going to bring into the life of somebody else. That pastor on the other side of the world, didn't know what those two verses were going to bring into our hearts. It was an encouragement. It was strengthening. It was comforting for us. And it was such a big blessing. But they didn't know that. But they were faithful and they were obedient. That's all that we have to do as we're the delivery person. Hear from the Holy Spirit. Obey 
and bring the word of God to the person who needs it. Sometimes it's a picture. God speaks to us through pictures sometimes. Sometimes you'll, maybe you had a dream, or maybe it's sometimes a vision, or maybe it's just one picture. I see like a, a, a bridge with clouds around it and stuff. Maybe that's the one picture you see. And you speak it to that person. You say, I, 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 see, a, I see you like you're on a bridge and, and this. You don't have to be weird or strange about it or anything. You don't have to say, the word of God from heaven says this and this and this. No, you don't have to be like that. Just be normal with people and just say, hey, look, you know, I, I was praying and as I was praying, uh, you know, I believe that the Holy Spirit speaks to us and, and the Holy Spirit encourages us. And, and, and you can just tell them, say, hey, look, I see this picture and I think God wants to speak to you through this picture and tell them what you saw and let the Holy Spirit do his work in that person. Sometimes it's even just one single word. You can come up to that person and just say, hey, look, you know, I believe that God wants to speak to you this one word. And maybe you don't know all of the, all of the results of what that word is going to bring in somebody's life, but that's not for you to know. What you, what's for you to do is to be faithful and to just speak the word of God. So sometimes it can be a Bible verse, a picture, or maybe even just one word. In a situation like that, sometimes it happens, you know, when you're in a church service. That happens to me a lot, uh, especially in church, when God says, I want you to go over and pray for this person. Or I want you to go over and speak this, this scripture verse for, over that person. Or I want you to uh, say this word for this person. And, you know, so you just go and during the worship service or maybe after service or during prayer times, you can do that. Sometimes when you're at home and you're praying, God speaks a, a, a word of prophecy into you for a certain person, like this pastor over in Canada. She was praying, and, and, and then, so then she texted us. And so our job is to be close to the Holy Spirit and to be obedient and let the Holy Spirit's work happen in somebody's life. So we need to be faithful and deliver the gift that God is giving us for someone else. But as we do, there are certain principles and guidelines that we should follow as well. The first one that we need to do, the first guideline in bringing a gift of the Holy Spirit or bringing a word of prophecy for a person is to, number one, we need to always compare it and test it with the Word of God. If your Bible, if, if the word of prophecy that you're saying is something different than what the Bible says, I'm sorry, it's not from God. The Bible is our standard. The Bible is the written word of God, and everything comes un, into submission to the word of God. Everything must be submitted to the word of God. Okay? So, someone says to you, says, I have a word of God that you need to divorce your wife and go get married to this person. Well, the Bible says that God hates divorce, so you can just say, I'm sorry, but you did not hear from God. That is not the word of God. So that's just an absolutely extreme example, but we always, as people who want to be used by the Holy Spirit, it's so important, it's so important that we spend time with the word of God and know what God's word says. I believe that every person who is striving to be a prophet, striving to use the gifts of the Holy Spirit, must begin here. The Holy Spirit and getting into the presence of God is great, but the Holy Spirit inspired the Word of God. So it is so, so important that you get into the Word of God so that you know what God's Word is and so that you can say everything without contradicting the Word of God. So important is to test things, test the Word of God, uh, test the, the prophecy with the Word of God. Also, we need to test the Word with other believers as well. Especially when you're just starting out and you want to be used in, in the gift of prophecy. So important that you submit 
to other Christian leaders who you know and trust, mature leaders who can help you and coach you through this as you begin to grow and grow in this. You must test the word with other believers. Invite other people. You say, you know, maybe if I have a, a word for somebody else and in the church, I might go to one of our other pastors, maybe to like Brother Mara, and say, hey, Brother Mara, I, need, I have a word for this person. Would you just come and pray with me with this person and just make sure that everything is is, is, is legitimate and everything is, is, that I say is, is tested with good, strong Christian leaders, okay? Especially, okay, and I would caution you about this, especially when it's one guy who feels like he's receiving a word for a girl, always take somebody with you or a girl to a guy. It is always best to make sure that you do things above board, do things that is not hidden and secret, but you always want to have those protections around you and to be without fault and without blame as we do these things, as we minister the Word of God. Always make sure that your Word is comforting, exhorting, or edifying. Okay, You don't want to come and people be more depressed when they get the Word of God from you. Okay, That would not be helpful. Our motivation is love, like it says in 1 Corinthians 13. So if people are more depressed, then you need to, obviously you're not doing things the right way. So comfort, exhortation, edification. This is what God's word does. When you're bringing a word to someone, you have a prophetic word for someone, please don't be weird, okay? You don't have to say weird words. Just say, you know, have a conversation with someone. Say, hey, look, you know, I was... I was, I was praying the other day, and uh, this word, this verse just kept coming to my mind. And I feel that it's God's word for you. And ask them, you know, say, hey, look, you know, I, I, I don't know exactly, but I want to be faithful to what the Holy Spirit's saying to me. And so you just share it with them. And honestly, God's so good. He's faithful. He's not going to lead you down a wrong path. He's not going to embarrass you. He wants to use you and you he wants to strengthen you and make you bold to take the next step out so most of the time what ends up happening is that person gets blessed they get strengthened and encouraged and we can reveal God's love to that person then my next guideline would be don't try to understand the word of God Okay? Don't try to understand the prophetic word for that person before you give it to them. Sometimes the word of God, the, the, the prophetic words, don't make sense. You know? But you know what? It's not for you anyways. It's not for you to understand. It's just for you to deliver it. If someone was to read my text messages from my sister, for example... If someone else was to read my text messages from my sister and they just read one text message from her, they might think, man, this is weird. I have no idea what, it, what they're talking about. But you know what? It's not the message is from God to that person. You're just the delivery person. So don't try to understand everything before you give it. Sometimes sometimes our, our, our natural mind wants to do that. We want to say, okay, what does this mean and how is this going to help them and how, what's the effect of this going to Don't. Don't try to figure that all out. Just say, okay, you know what? This is the word, and that's it. You know, it's for you. It's from God. It's not for me to understand. But the word of God will be a blessing to those people. So make sure that you're just faithful. Don't try to, to understand it. Finally, don't say too much either. Sometimes we um, have a gift of talking too much. <laughs> And trying to say too much, trying to talk too much. Don't, no, just say, this is God's word. And, you know, maybe you pray with them after, but don't try to say too much. Because sometimes we end up saying too, too much. And adding to things that, that God didn't really intend for us to add. So let the word of God do its work. God knows what he's doing. The Holy Spirit's faithful and good. The Holy Spirit is alive and moving and acting this is the gift of prophecy, the gift of the Holy Spirit to bring an encouragement 
to bring edification, to bring comfort to us. And I am so thankful. I just think of all of the people over the years who have been so faithful to me, to help me on my way. Sometimes it was a scripture verse. Sometimes it was just one picture. Sometimes it was, you know, sometimes it was a little bit of a warning. But God has been faithful to me. And I know that if you've walked with God for any number of years or even months, God has also been faithful to you. There have been instances that you could point to and say, yeah, God spoke to me right here. God spoke to me right here. And think about all of the people over the years who have been faithful to the Holy Spirit to bring a word for you and have blessed you and helped you along the way. There are so many people. But you know what? Other people also need you as well. Other people need you to be faithful to the Holy Spirit and to obey and to bring the word so that we can all be an encouragement and a strength to each other. We need each other. The body of Christ needs each other. Also in 1 Corinthians 12 and 14, it talks about all of the different uh, gifts of the Holy Spirit as different parts of the body. We are the body of Christ. I need you. Other people need you. You need other people. So let's depend on each other. Let's help each other. Let's be a strength to each other and be obedient and faithful to the Holy Spirit who's working in our lives. Let's pray together. Dear Holy Spirit, we thank you that you are real and true and active and working in our hearts and in our lives each and every day. We open up our hearts to you. Lord God, we want to see the gifts of the Holy Spirit working in and through us. And so we say, God, our attention is yours. Speak to us so that we can be faithful and obedient to bring your word to other people, to help them along the way, to encourage and strengthen them, and to have them know that you are the God of love and that they are loved and that they are important and that nothing can separate them from the love of God. God, we offer ourselves to you and we say, Holy Spirit, use us. We engage and we make that decision to be more obedient, to, to be more aware, to be more responsive to you so that we can be a blessing and we can be that person who you use. Pray that you would just bless each and every person out there. I pray for a new sensitivity to your Holy Spirit. A new sensitivity to the love of God and the moving of the Holy Spirit. A new understanding of the Word of God as they read. God, you are so awesome. You're so great. And we thank you that you are personally involved in our lives. You know us personally. You know us so well. Thank you for your love. Bless each and every person who's watching this today. Fill them with, this, with your spirit. Bless their week this week. May they have an overcoming, spirit-filled, love-filled week living in the victory of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Don't forget small groups. If you don't have one, get one. If you have one already, don't neglect it. Meet together with your small group. If you have any prayer requests, you have any comments, you want to meet with a pastor, you need prayer for anything, please contact us. You can call our offices. You can send us a comment or a text message. You can personal message any of us. We love you guys. Have an awesome week, and we'll see you again next week. God bless you.